Welcome back to part two of this April 8 eclipse video series, and uh, we're going to get right into it. Well, Mackenzie, let's tell our, the viewers, don't forget to watch the first episode about the April 8th eclipse. Yes, please go watch the first episode, and uh, we're going to discuss now some of the topics that people are applying to the eclipses uh, well, there's multiple eclipses, but the one specifically on April 8th and the one in 2017. So here's what people are saying. But that's not all. All of this will be taking place under the constellation of Cetus, the whale. This is a sign that judgment is coming and we need to repent now. You can't make this stuff up. What does that indicate to it's, us? It's the sign of Jonah the prophet. It's the sign of you better repent. It's a sign of the clock is ticking. You got 40 days. Wow. So these people are really putting some prophetic significance here. Well, what they're doing, Mackenzie, is they're looking at the fact that this uh, uh, 2024 eclipse is going to go over, some people say eight. I've counted seven cities uh, uh, called Nineveh. And uh, of course, there's also a city called Jonah, Jonah, Texas. And so they're looking at this uh, thinking that there's a prophecy that has to do with um, what Jesus said regarding uh, the sign of Jonah the prophet. Okay, and this, this specific eclipse this year is happening April 8th. Yes. And there is another eclipse that happened in 2017, which we're going to cover. I just wanted to mention that, though, because this, there's, there's a lot of information to cover about these two eclipses. Absolutely, there is. And, and what, where I think it's going to become interesting as we talk about the first eclipse, because you see this, uh, the, the eclipse that's coming uh, this year, uh, April 8th, is uh, going over all these cities named Nineveh, but there's a city of interest that the 2017 eclipse went over. It went directly over a city in Tennessee. Okay. So before we tell you guys about this, we're going to show you what people are saying about uh, the connection with Jonah. The path that the solar eclipse is taking will literally cross over the city of Jonah, Texas, several cities and towns named Nineveh. And not only that, it will cross over where the Ark is in Williamston, Kentucky. This eclipse has got a lot of people talking for one really big reason. And it's this, the pathway. Do you realize how many Nineveh places are, are on the map in America? There was ever a sign that God was telling us to repent is this. I hope you're paying attention. Have you guys heard about this eclipse that's happening on April 8th? It's a total solar eclipse that's going across the entire United States of America. Just so happens to be passing through eight cities named Nineveh. Nineveh in the Bible is a city that God told Jonah to go tell to repent. And they did. They listened to the word of God through Jonah. They repented and they were spared. It's no coincidence that this eclipse is going through eight cities named Nineveh. So, uh, Mackenzie, you know, almost everybody knows about the story of Jonah, right? Even, even people that don't have a Judeo-Christian background uh, have heard the story of Jonah and uh, being swallowed by the fish, the whale, uh, whatever you think it is. Um, well, what people have looked at is, to, is, is in this connection between Nineveh and Jonah and looking at the Jonah story, um, people have often wondered, and I have often wondered too, how it was that uh, Jonah was able to go to a wicked city and preach that the city was going to be destroyed in 40 days and have the people actually listen to him. Not just write him off as some yeah, crazy just, guy. Right. And so people have looked at this and there have been people that have said, well, did you know that there was an eclipse that happened at Nineveh? And this is important because when we look at all these different uh, uh, prophecies, um, it's not just that there was an eclipse that happened when Alexander the Great uh, conquered the Persians. Uh, but it happened where he was, right. right? And when we look at these stories about the comet showing up or about the star that led them to Bethlehem, the, 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 the celestial event actually takes place... Over the location. Over the location. 
And we can see mathematically that an eclipse did take place over Nineveh during the time of Jonah the prophet. And I think we have some references here. Yeah, so this is a, a reference about ancient Assyria because yes. that's where Nineveh was actually. And uh, Jonah lived, and it says here, during the reign of Jeroboam II, who ruled from 786 to 746 BC. Now, several Bible, Bible scholars have concluded and speculated that the eclipse happened on the very day that Jonah gave his message to Nineveh, which, like you said, is extremely interesting and compelling in this connection that Jesus made right here in Matthew 12, verse 39. But he answered and said unto them, An evil and adulterous generation seeketh after a sign, and there shall no sign be given to it, but the sign of the prophet Jonas. So Jonas is Jonah. Yeah, Jonas is Jonah in Greek, right? And so these people are looking at uh, this, uh, this eclipse that's coming. They say, hey, uh, it can't be a coincidence that the eclipse is going over all these towns and cities named Nineveh and over another town uh, called Jonah. And they're looking at all these things and bringing them together. And they believe that something is going to happen. Something's going to happen. So then going back to these eclipses here, what sort of connections do we have with this eclipse in 2024, the eclipse in 2017, and I'm just going to show again, Acts 2.17, we referenced this in the last video, uh, about in the last days when you see these wonders in heaven, that God's spirit and people are going to be prophesying and having dreams. What is the connection between these two, two eclipses and these dreams and, and things like this? Well, we also talked, Mackenzie, about the fact that you know, God does nothing unless he first reveals it to his servants, the prophets. So what good is a, uh, a sign in the heaven if nobody can understand what it is? <laughs> That's a very right? good point. And so if God is going to do it, he's going to give uh, the understanding of it to uh, somebody that has either had a prophecy or a dream. And uh, when we look at the first eclipse, right, because these two are, are intersecting, right? There was one in 2017. Um, and so now there's this one coming in 2024. But why don't we go back and look at that city that we talked about uh, that the eclipse in 2017 went direct, directly over? Okay, so here's the picture. It is Nashville, Tennessee. Nashville, Tennessee. Nashville, Tennessee. And now this is where sort of my story comes uh, into this. You see... Um, we believe that this uh, person that had this dream over 120 years ago um, had it had it, had the dream in the city of Nashville, and um, not only did they have the dream in the city of Nashville, they prophesied that something was going to happen in Nashville. Wow! And so what happened was uh, me and many other people uh, we went to Nashville to do some evangelism. And uh, through my experience at going to Nashville, I found out, Mackenzie, that it wasn't just only this person that lived over 120 years ago that had a dream. Many people have had dreams in Nashville. Uh, and, and the dreams are all either the same or similar. And um, You were telling me about some of these stories of the people that you personally have interacted with. I I'll tell you a couple of the stories uh, really quickly. Um, I, there was a young man at, I, I flew into Nashville, went to the airport and I had to check a, into a rental car and, uh, you know, the rental car people are trained, you know, when a, when a traveler's coming into town, oh, what brings you into town? And so, uh, there was a young man and he was asking me this question and, uh, he said, well, you know, what brings you into town? And I said, well, I'm here, uh, making a documentary. I'm still hoping one day to put this thing out. Uh, and he goes, well, a documentary on what? And I said, uh, on the destruction of Nashville, Tennessee. And he took note of, of me saying that. And he goes, you know, well, how's it going to be destroyed? And I said, well, according to this dream that this person had that I believe uh, has sig significance because of other dreams that this person has had, that, um, that it's going to be destroyed by an immense ball of fire. 
and fire is going to branch out from this ball of fire and it's going to destroy uh, either all or part of Nashville. And when I said this, the young man literally stumbled back. And I said, is everything okay? And he goes, I've had the same dream. Wow. And I've been telling everybody in my family that, uh, you know, something's going to happen. I'm concerned about what's going on here in Nashville. And I told the young man, I said, well, you know what's happened to you? Uh, you're experiencing Acts chapter 2. And I actually had my Bible with me, and I pulled it out, and I read from Acts chapter 2 about, um, you know, young men and young women having dreams. And I said, you know, the Lord is pouring out His, his Spirit, and people are having these dreams. Now, another story, this is an interesting one. On the other side of the country, I was visiting another area, and I had the conversation with this uh, lady, and uh, she asked me the same question, but she asked it in a different way. Mm. She said, well, where are you coming from? And I said, I just came from Nashville. And she said, Nashville, that's interesting. I just moved from there. And I said, oh, that's interesting. And she goes, what were you doing in Nashville? And I said, well, I'm there doing some evangelism and making a a documentary on the destruction of Nashville, Tennessee. And she stopped. And um, she goes, well, how's it going to be destroyed? And I said, well, an immense ball of fire is going to come and destroy the city. And when I said that, she literally stumbled backwards. Uh, praise God, there was a wall behind her, and she stumbled into this wall. And I said, is everything okay? And she says, you know, my son-in-law is very religious, and we just moved from Nashville, Tennessee, because my son-in-law had a dream that a ball of fire was going to come down and destroy Nashville, and he was so adamant that him and my daughter and me and my husband all moved away from Nashville. Wow. Now, this is absolutely incredible because we're seeing these dreams and visions happening real time, and they're all the same. Yes. And... And as you mentioned, you were making this video, uh, and we have a picture here on the screen. This was, you were doing this in 2017, the year that the eclipse happened we were, over Nashville. We were, we and, were. And let me just tell you a little backdrop about this clip. This is actually a clip from a video that was made at a, a television station in Walla Walla, Washington, called Blue Mountain TV. And they used the title that we were going by. See... The group of us, of us that went to Nashville, we thought to ourselves, you know, we don't want to see the city of Nashville destroyed with all the people. Could it be that if we went there and we did these evangelistic series and we warned them about this dream and about the other dreams that people are having and stuff like this, could it be that God would hold back the judgment if Nashville itself was able to repent? And what we did is we looked at the story in the Bible of Jonah and him, him going to Nineveh. Right. And so what we, what we did is we coined this phrase uh, back in uh, 2017, uh, Nineveh to Nashville, because we were hoping that we could go to Nashville and give this warning, the city would repent and uh, the judgment would be um, postponed or stayed. So that's very interesting that you called it that because that title, Nineveh to Nashville, like connects these two eclipses together. It does together. connect the two eclipses together because what happens is the first eclipse goes over Nashville and um, we were wondering back in that time period in 2017, does this thing have any uh, significance? Honestly, I didn't know anything about the second uh, eclipse that was coming this year. Mm -hmm. And it wasn't until I started getting emails and text messages from people telling me about the clips uh, and I watched the videos and it's, you know, Nineveh, 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 Nineveh. And I'm like, wow, there's this connection, Nineveh to Nashville. That's what we've been saying since 2017. Yeah. And this shows that there is a warning that needs to be given, right? Yes. There's a warning just like Jonah had to warn Nineveh. We need to be warning. Now, I want to go to some of these other dreams that were taking place over a hundred years ago because we have this principle in the Bible, prophesy and then prophesy again. And that God tells us and then he reiterates this thing a second time. So the first time this is mentioned 
is we see this in 1904. And, and this is a manuscript from the person that had these dreams. Yes. So there was, uh, and this person, uh, she was in Nashville. Oh, it's a she. Yes, this is a <laughs> she. And it says on your handmaidens too, right? Yes, that's right. So we have this lady who was in Nashville, and it says, a scene opened before me. A great ball of fire seemed to fall from heaven. That sounds a lot similar like the two stories that you gave. It does. And from it went forth flashes of light. When these flashes of light would strike a building, the building would burn like tinder. And then I heard someone say, I knew that this was coming. These are the judgments of God that I knew were coming. You knew, said another. This is, this is something that me and you definitely do not want to have said to us. Right. That you knew. Said another, you were my neighbor. Why did you not tell me that these things were coming? Why did you not warn others? And that is a very sad statement. Yes, it is a very sad statement. But what's interesting about this statement is that when these judgments come, the people, some of the people that knew about it were either too embarrassed to say anything or just thought that people would think they were crazy. Um, but what ends up happening here is that they know exactly what it is because yeah. they're saying, we knew that this was coming. And the other people are saying, you knew, mm -hmm. right? So, so, you know, you can't speculate that they didn't know what it was. Right. So then we have in 1905, a reoccurring account of this. When I was at Nashville, an immense ball of fire that came right from heaven and settled in Nashville. And that's, that's, that's it right there. She, she sees this, you know, in the first uh, 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 talk about it, she talks about what she had this dream when she was in Nashville. Mm -hmm. And she's saying, when I was in Nashville, I had this dream and the ball of fire came right and settled in Nashville. Right in Nashville. Yes. There were flames going out like arrows from that ball. Houses were being consumed. Houses were tottering and falling. It was just as we expected, they said. We expected this. Others were wringing their hands in agony and crying unto God for mercy. You knew it, said they. You knew that this was coming and never said a word to us. Never told them or given them any warning at all. So this is very clear that in this dream, this ball comes from heaven or from the sky and settles right in Nashville. So something is going to happen to Nashville. And that's what these other people told you personally as well. And now we had this eclipse in 2017. We have this connection to Nineveh. And it's like there's a lot of puzzle pieces coming together here. So we have one more piece that I think you want to touch on in regards to this dream. That's right. There is something unique about the dream. Uh, the woman that has the dream talks about a specific spot in Nashville where this immense ball is going to come down. Notice this quote right here from 1904. The sea, there was a scene presented to me. It was the night before the Sabbath. That is when the scene was presented. I looked out of the window and there was an immense ball of fire that came from heaven and it fell where they were casting buildings with pillars. Especially the pillars were presented to me. I want to hold that thought right there for a second, Mackenzie, because notice what she says. She says it was a place where they, it fell where they were casting buildings with pillars. Okay. And, and notice that she says buildings, plural. More than one. More than one. But notice then what she says here. And it seemed, to, and it seemed as if the ball came right to the building, singular, and crushed it. Okay. So Mackenzie, what we have to do here is we have to look for a place in Nashville that, is, uh, that has lots of pillars because she says in the dream, especially the pillars were presented to me. Mm -hmm. So number one, we have to look for a building with lots of pillars. Number two, we have to find that building with lots of pillars and it has to have been built where other buildings were being built at the same time with pillars. Mm. And then those buildings have to go away 
because it has to be one building. And just leave this one building where the ball of fire comes down to it. That seems pretty specific. It's specific. So is that the case? It is the case. And so if we look at this building right here, this is, this is an image of the replica of the Parthenon in uh, Nashville, Tennessee. It's in uh, Tennessee Centennial Park. And in fact, when they were building this uh, structure right here, uh, they literally use a system where they were casting the pillars. In fact, the casts themselves were made directly from molds and casts from the original Parthenon in, uh, in Athens, Greece. And they brought those casts over, and when they made this replica, they made these casts. And in fact, we have an image here uh, that will show you. This is actually one of the original casts. Um, I went to the Parthenon complex, and uh, I was able to find some of the original casts here. Um, on, the, uh, on, on this screen right here, you can see in the upper left corner of the picture that some of the concrete is still on the cast. Yep. And then uh, this picture with me and the inner part of the cast um, is the smooth side that would be where the concrete was poured into. And what they would do is they would interlock these casts around themselves and they would pour the concrete in. And then when that's set up, they would raise it up and pour more and more and more. And so they were, in fact, built with a method where they were casted. Wow. So that, that seems like that fulfills that part of it. And, and as we look right here in this image, Mackenzie, um, this is, once again, uh, Centennial Park. The, it, it's called Centennial Park because they made this place for the 100th anniversary of Nashville, Tennessee. Um, and what they were trying to do here was replicate the famous 1893 uh, World's Fair that was in Chicago, mm -hmm. an exhibition. And so they had their own exhibition here. And um, you see that there's all these other buildings that have pillars. Uh, there's even a pyramid over there that has pillars. Yeah. Uh, the, why, did they build, um, why did they build the pyramid? And why did they build this uh, temple here, this uh, Athens temple? Well, I'll tell you why. So t two of the great cities in uh, Tennessee, one is Memphis, Tennessee, and the other one's Nashville, Tennessee. And uh, Memphis is uh, named after Memphis, Egypt. And e uh, Memphis was on the Nile in Egypt, and so they built a building representing the city of Memphis, and they made it uh, in the shape of a pyramid representing Egypt. Um, so why did they build the Parthenon replica here to represent Nashville? Well, at, uh, Nashville, because of all the uh, colleges and universities that are in and around Nashville, at one time it was called the Athens of the West mm. because they were really into higher education. Eventually, as the United States grew, it became known as the Athens of the South. And so one of the symbols of Athens up on the Acropolis is the pagan temple of Athena. Right, and Athena was the patron god of Athens. In fact, yep. Athens is named after Athena. And so, uh, during this exhibition here in uh, 1897, uh, they, you know, they built these buildings. Now, the thing is, Mackenzie, when they built them, they were only built to be temporary. They were just made out of wood and plaster. And anybody that knows anything about plaster and wood, it doesn't weather very good, right? It looks good. It looks good for a short period of time. Yeah. And so all the buildings were either demolished or moved to other places. Okay. So this was like when we had, she's seen these buildings being built with pillars. That's correct. And then all the buildings go away, and then this is what's left. Uh, the only building that's left there in, in Cent uh, uh, Centennial Park, uh, those big buildings in the background are a ways away. And if you were, you can't see it in this image right here, but if you were to look to the left here, you'd see just a big open area that people go and they fly kites and they lay in the field and read. Um, and so they were casting buildings with pillars, plural, and then the ball of fire came to the building singular, and that's mm -hmm. what's there right now. So we have this singular oh, built. And I should add one thing. Um, the original Parthenon that they had built, uh, built started becoming dilapidated, 
And so what they did is they actually uh, rebuilt it. They, re they renovated it uh, using concrete instead of plaster, and that's the building that you see today. It's a scale replica of the one in Athens. Okay. So that's a lot of things that are coming together here. Yes. And I guess my question would be, why Nashville? Why would there be judgment coming? We talked about this eclipse now in, in 2017 in Nashville, and now there's this other eclipse in, that's coming on April 8th. What does this actually mean now? Are we saying that this fireball could come on April 8th? Are we saying like, you know, they said we have 40 days. Is this what we're saying here? No, 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 Mackenzie. This is not what we're saying at all. As we illustrated earlier, um, in different periods of time, different events in the heavens uh, were given, and there wasn't a time connected to it. Some of the events happened on the very day. Some of them happened in the very year. Some of them happened years later. So, well, I guess we had Revelation 6 that said, when you see these signs, I'm coming soon. And, so, and those signs ended in 1833, when yes. the falling of the stars was. But does this mean that there is a warning on Nashville and some of these cities? I don't think it's a coincidence that we have individuals that have had these dreams and they've been going on for over 120 years at this point. In fact, 120 years this year, and I'm not giving any... Uh, uh, special thing about 120 years. It's just been 120 years this year since people have been having these dreams about uh, uh, Nashville been being destroyed by a ball of fire. And I think that we should seriously look at these dreams and we should seriously look at the fact that the Bible does tell us that these things in the heavens are for signs. But I think we have to be very careful about like some of these people are doing online. This thing's coming and something's happening 40 days later. Right. I think we need to stay away from that. Okay, so we're going to leave this video off here. But that doesn't mean we're done. No. We have a lot more to say in the next episode. So if you haven't seen part one, please go to part one. And please go to part three, which is the next episode. And we're going to pick up where we left off here on Nashville and judgments and what this could mean coming in the future. So hope to see you in the next video. Thank you for watching.